let's review what happened this past week, starting with Adam and the World of Football scoreboard. That's right. We're going to start the scoreboard off with the NFL scoreboard. It was Woo-hoo. week one. Finally, <laughs> some regular season football in the National Football League. A lot of good games. <laughs> this was I, this was a very good weekend for yeah. like at least half the games, maybe even more. I, shoot, let's talk about it. Let's, yeah. let's get things kicked off where things got started. Thursday night, it was the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers defeating the Dallas Cowboys 31-29. to What a great game this ended up being. I wasn't sure how Dallas uh, would be able to hang with mm-hmm. Tampa, but they did. I thought Dak looked great. Uh, Dallas's defense looked good at times. Tom Brady looked <laughs> good as always. And speaking of Mr. Brady, he has now got the most quarterback wins in Week 1 games since at least 1950. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and that's not it. I mean... He's also the first player in NFL history to start his 300th regular season game, Mr. Brady. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Yeah, you play, what, 20, 22 years? uh... Yeah, this is (laughs) is season 22 for him. So, yeah. So, yep. uh, Other than, you know, a a nice back and forth game where both teams had some really explosive plays, I mean, what else is there to talk about this game? I think it was a great way to kick off the season. It, It literally came down to the end of the game there. Yeah, before the game, I didn't give Dallas much chance at all. Uh, but Dak Prescott surprised me. He played extremely well for not having played in the preseason and coming off an injury from last year. So I and then the I was very uh, added injury that he had that we saw during Hard Knocks, the the arm injury on yeah. top of the the leg yeah. injury, we were all scared about. Yeah. So I didn't give Dallas or Dak Prescott much chance. Uh, they really surprised me. They played a great game, and but in the end. Tom Brady uh, does what he does best. He leads the team down in the closing minutes to a winning, oh, I winning know. score. When I saw there was a minute and a yep. half left, I was yep. like, you gave Brady too much time. Yep. <laughs> and that was their downfall. Exactly. Yep. All right, moving on. The Houston Texans defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars 37-21. to Houston's defense had three interceptions in this game, and they had three interceptions all of last season. <laughs> so... Take that for what you will. Good for Houston. I thought you know Jacksonville would come out and, and have a better showing than this. But, I mean, hey, it's week one. Hard to really know what these teams look like. I think Trevor Lawrence, you know, he'll be a good quarterback. You just got to give him a few weeks to really yeah. uh, get warmed up. Yep. All right. The Washington football team fell to the Los Angeles Chargers 20-16. to uh, Gruesome, another quarterback injury for the – for the football team of Washington with Ryan Fitzpatrick going down, mm. uh, Tyler Heineke had to step in. We saw him play great in that uh, one playoff game against Tampa Bay last season. But That seems to be the whole theme of this first week. A lot of players getting injured in the first week. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that usually. I mean, there's always injuries. It just depends on what – the quarterback position is the one where it'll get the most, uh, you know, noteworthy. And we don't know how long – at least last I saw how long Fitzpatrick will be out. Hmm. And so let the rumors start. Is Washington going to go sign – Cam Newton? (laughs) Well, uh, that is his former coach there, uh, uh, Ron Rivera. And uh, the Los Angeles uh, Chargers head coach, uh, Mr. Staley, he is the first Chargers head coach to win his debut since Norv Turner in 2007. So good for them. I like the Chargers. I like that Justin Herbert kid. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. I think they got a bright season ahead of them. Uh, Somebody else who's got a bright season ahead of them. How about Russell Wilson and those Seattle Seahawks? Just lighten it up in Indianapolis. Uh, Russ threw some great deep passes. Russ looked fantastic. The Seahawks beat the Colts 28-16, to and the Colts got to see Carson Wentz. Gl- glad to see him back week one after mm-hmm. that injury on the second day of practice. Yeah. So Seattle now 12-1 and in their last 13 games, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Wow. So uh, I, I, incredible for them. I mean, like we always talk about going from the West Coast – to the East Coast is usually a hard thing to do, but yeah. unless you're these Seattle Seahawks, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, nothing seems to phase them. They just yep. they just keep going. They just keep winning. Yeah. Uh, and then next we had Sam Darnold getting revenge on the New York Jets as the Carolina Panthers won 19 to 14. And then Christian McCaffrey, who coming back from an injury last season, the star running back, it's his fifth career game with 80 plus rushing yards and 80 plus receiving yards. Mm. so good for him good to see him back i know a lot of fantasy owners are happy to see him uh make his return yeah a little tidbit from this game uh, a lady by the name of maya chaka becomes the first black woman to officiate 
in an NFL game. She was at the Jets Carolina game. She's the third woman referee in the NFL. Good for her. Mm -hmm. um, breaking down some doors and uh, hopefully we'll see some more. Yeah, hopefully. And then on top of that, we had, I mean, we saw the great video that was kind of going around yesterday, or yesterday, the day before, of the Carolina Panthers, like, intro video of a oh, yeah. panther running around yep. the stadium and yep. chewing up a Jets flag. Yep. So that was pretty cool. It and was. It reminded me, and I saw the video of this, too, when the Ravens did this a couple years ago with, like, a flying raven going through the stadium and hmm. looked like a dragon from Game of Thrones, <laughs> essentially. But, but, yeah, so congratulations, Carolina. Good to see, you know, new quarterback in a new place getting a win, and We'll have another one of those later on we'll talk about. Uh, how about this? The Cincinnati Bengals beat the Minnesota Vikings in the closing seconds of overtime to win 27-24. to 24. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the score on my laptop, or you had it on your phone, and it just went down to the last second of the It did. I thought, thought it was this was going to be tied. I thought it was going to be another opening week tie, and I think the Vikings have done this before. Mm. Uh but, yeah, 27-24, Joe Burrow looked great. Jamari Chase, who, you know, the rookie wide receiver they drafted, who was having a lot of problems during the preseason. Everybody was saying he couldn't catch a, a cold, <laughs> and he had a great game, too. You know, he had a fantastic long catch, which is very reminiscent of their days in LSU, both those players. So mm. uh, that could be a dangerous hookup uh, the rest of the year if these two guys stay healthy. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, the game-winning field goal, 33 yards as time expired in overtime. Wow. So what a way to win a game in week one. <laughs> Thrilling fashion there. Yep. And then uh, you should be thrilled if you're an Arizona Cardinals fan because Kyler Murray was doing Kyler Murray things to the Tennessee Titans as the Cardinals won 38-13. to hmm. Something I didn't expect was that Cardinals defense being as good as it ended up being, stopping Derrick Henry in that rushing attack, stopping uh, Julio Jones and A.J. Brown for the most part. Man, oh, man, the Cardinals could be a team to reckon with. And, that NFC West, we've already seen the Cardinals win, Seahawks win. We got a couple more teams to talk about from the NFC West, but that NFC West is pretty good. <laughs> Any thoughts from this game? Uh, nope. All right, and this is also the first time in Arizona Cardinals history uh, that multiple wide receivers have each had two plus receiving touchdowns. So mm. they've had a couple of guys. I know DeAndre Hopkins had a couple, so I think Christian Kirk might have had the other couple. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so those are your little fun tidbits from that game. Good. And then, uh, it's time to talk about the team that we love to hate the most. Our beloved Detroit lions, mm. uh, fell to the 49ers of San Francisco, 41 to 33. This was a game. You got to watch the whole thing. Yep. I listened to the whole game because I was driving back from the upper peninsula yep. and I got to catch probably the best part of the game. Yeah. Uh, the last two minutes. <laughs> by the time I got home, yeah, I got to catch the last few minutes on TV, but, uh, Hey, they were down what thirty-one to ten at halftime. I think it was thirty-eight to or 10. thirty-eight to ten at halftime. So yeah, well, yeah, 30, 31, 10 at halftime. Yeah, thirty-one 30, ten at halftime. Yeah, don't later. correct me. I was right. Uh, <laughs> so they were down, you know, twenty-one points going into the half. I think at one point, yeah, it was thirty-eight to ten, mm. and the Lions found a way to to crawl back and, and get within eight points. They got an onside kick, which was unbelievable. Yep. Uh, got the touchdown. Got the two-point conversion, and. Unfortunately, you know, things didn't go their way at the end. You know, the second onside yeah. kick, which, I mean, the odds of two onside kicks right, in the game yeah. are, are really tough. Yeah. But, I, I mean, if anything, you know, I was really disappointed with the Lions for three quarters of this game. And by the end, you know, I have to admit I kind of like their fight. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, we're going to win a whole lot of games still. Yeah. But at least, you know, in one game, I know it's just one game, but Dan Campbell's, you're going to knock us down, we're going to get back. They got back up. Yeah, they did. They got back up after, you know, struggling for a while, and there was some frustration on the defense, and the Lions lost cornerback um, Jeff Okuda, number three overall pick from last season for the year. So yeah. that'll be a tough one to come back from. But I think this is going to be a scrappy team. You know, we might not win a lot of games, but I think as long as they can be scrappy, I'll be happy. Yeah. Um, San Francisco, this is the most points they've scored in a week one road game in team history. <laughs> the 41 points, not a big surprise. We figured Detroit's defense wouldn't be, yeah. you know, the best, but a lot of stuff to work on. So many records by other teams being set when they play against Detroit yeah. over the years. Man. And, and the 49ers, another one of those NFC West teams that are 1-0. Yeah. Uh, moving on, the Pittsburgh Steelers got a win in Buffalo, defeating the Bills 23-16. to Pittsburgh now 5-1 and one in their last six road games against Buffalo. Buffalo had a tough time with this. I was a little surprised how, how well the Steelers were able to handle um, the Bills. I think the Bills jumped out to a nice lead, but then the Steelers kind of 
were able to pull themselves back in it and then control the rest of the game. So yeah, I was very surprised by the final score in this one. I I thought uh, Buffalo for sure would uh, would handle you know their business at home, but. Man, they, they did not this week. Nope. So, yep, Steelers uh, back to – I mean, they had a great regular season last year, so let's see if they can, you know, get back on that and hopefully they improve because last year, you know, they fell apart towards the end of the season. So mm. is it the same thing, a good Steelers team that's just going to fizzle out? Let's we'll wait and see. It's week one, everybody. Yeah. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles shocked the world, I think, given the, the Falcons a 32-6 to drubbing. Hmm. Uh First time head coach, you know, new starting. I mean, he's not a new starting quarterback, but second year quarterback. They got a lot of young weapons, and they blew the doors off the Falcons. I was a mm. little surprised. Jalen yeah. Hurts, quarterback for the Eagles, had 264 yards passing with three touchdowns and 62 rushing yards. So Jalen Hurts was doing quite a bit. Uh, he, he looked uh, very, very good. Yeah, that was another surprise. I, I didn't see that one coming either. Yep, so who knows if the Eagles can keep that kind of, you know, momentum going the rest of the year if this was just a one game thing is atlanta that bad who knows it's week like we said yep. it's week, week one, one. You, it, it means i mean it tells you nothing about what's going to happen not this yet season. give it a couple games to really yeah. you know figure the teams out yep uh this was a thrilling game the cleveland browns fell in kansas city 33 to 29 uh the, the browns had this for the first half this was their game to lose and yep. lose it they did yeah uh because you know patrick Mahomes. i mean you can never count out Mr. Oh, no. Mr. Mahomes. Absolutely not. Uh, so you, you knew he had to throw it, and he still beat you. Yeah. That's what gets me is you know that Patrick Mahomes had to sling it, yep. and you still couldn't beat him. Yeah, I mean, he's he's good on the road, but, man, don't bet against him at home either. <laughs> yeah, and that home crowd, what a home crowd, too. They were loud. It was cool seeing all of Arrowhead filled up like that. Yeah, that, that place was packed. And, and don't knock the Browns too much. I mean, they looked great, you know, and, of course, towards the end, of, you know, they couldn't get it done, but – you know, I like Baker. I like you know a lot of the weapons the Browns have, and I like that defense the Browns have. So, hey, it's one loss against a great team that's won a Super Bowl within the last couple of years, gone to two straight Super Bowls. So, Cleveland, a team on the rise and a team to still watch out for, but Kansas City still Kansas City. Yeah. And for Cleveland, I mean, the unfortunate thing is you're one twenty one and one in season openers since you came back into the league in nineteen ninety nine. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, not always a great start, but it's. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. This is very true. And uh, somebody who knows that very well is Mr. Aaron Rodgers as the Green Bay Packers got the tar kicked out of him, mm-hmm. 38-3. to New uh, Saints starting quarterback, Jameis Winston, throws five touchdown passes in this game, which is tying a career high. Yeah. And, I mean, he also, I think they said he, for the most touched, or for the five touchdown passes, he threw the least amount of yards of anybody who's ever thrown five touchdown passes wow. in a game. It was like 164 yards was how much he threw for or something like that. Just crazy. Yeah. But that, that Saints, you know, he can dump it off to Kamara. He's got a couple of great receivers there to throw it to. So the New Orleans Saints not missing a beat without Drew Brees there. Uh, so good start for them. Yeah, this this was another shocker, man. I, who, who thought that uh, Green Bay would lose this badly? Uh, in week one, I, I thought that Aaron Rodgers was going to come out with a chip on his shoulder and just show everybody that, you know, I'm the starter around here and I'll be the starter as long as I want to be. Um, boy, that certainly didn't happen. I don't know. Like I said, this is just one game. Right. Uh, we'll see how they do in the coming weeks. But, boy, Green Bay looked really bad. Right. And is let the conspiracy theory start. Is Aaron Rodgers sabotage, sabotaging the Packers this season? <laughs> is it a full-on sabotage? I don't know. We'll have to see. They get the Lions next week, so oh, if you if he falls to the Lions, then I'm gonna have. Then I think the conspiracy theorists will be yeah, right. That, that's the cure for everything. When the Lions come to town, your your season just got a, a big boost. So. Yep, and on Monday Night Football, yeah, nonetheless. So. Yeah, I'm afraid for that one. <laughs> right. Oh, All right, and then the Denver Broncos got a win in New York against the Giants, twenty-seven to thirteen. Denver has now got a sixty-eight percent win uh, winning percentage in season open season openers since 1970 which is the highest in the nfl so if you're gonna bet in week one bet on denver (laughs) uh yeah not much from for me for this game other than teddy bridgewater you know carrying the broncos and and the giants still a young team that's got a lot to figure out so all right uh, the Miami Dolphins beat the New England Patriots in New England, 17 to 16. This was a very defensive game. Both, I mean, I think Mac Jones looked great. Tua, you know, was the lesser of the two quarterbacks, but I mean, his team found a way to come out and win. He even threw a costly interception uh, that didn't actually end up costing them anything. You yeah. know, one that you get kind of nervous about, but that team was able to, you know, 
not make that a factor despite his mistakes. So good for Miami. They're they're another good young team to watch out for. And New England in that defense, that defense is back. So don't count them out. So okay. All right, and then we had the Sunday night football game, which saw Matthew Stafford's debut as a Los Angeles Ram and was extremely heartbreaking for me to watch and heartwarming at the same time. It was cool to see Stafford having fun. I hated seeing him in a different uniform, but I think the Rams are going to be something special to watch. This game went exactly as I thought it would. (laughs) Stafford looked like a world beater. Uh, God, what did he have? He had like 300 yards passing, over 300 yards passing. But, yeah, I mean, he, he looked comfortable. He, he looked like he belonged there, unfortunately, you know, for all of us Detroit fans. But, you know, I'm happy for him. Yeah. Um, I'm rooting for him to have a great season, uh, maybe even win a Super Bowl. And yeah. uh, the sky's the limit for him out there we'll in L.A. We'll see. Right he, he had a couple of nice deep balls, you know, through three touchdown passes yeah. during the game. Had I think he had, a like, as high as you can get passer rating. Uh, so, shoot, sky's the limit for this kid. <laughs> and then the Rams are 5-0 and in week one. Uh, under head coach Sean McVay. Mm. So another team to bet on week one if Sean McVay is a head coach there. Mm. And uh, last night's Monday night game, wow. <laughs> yeah. Just wow. Yeah, we, you know, you got home from work uh, in the fourth quarter, and, yeah. and I was still up. I had some Mountain Dew, so I was good to go for the rest of the game. And, man, what an ending to that, that game. That was a great ending. The Raiders took it in overtime, 33-27, to and it was really complicated. Yeah, yeah sure was. it sure was. It was. It should have been simple. They threw a great uh, throw that should have been, well, I won't say it should have been, but it, everybody thought it was a touchdown yep. at it, first. It looked like it was a touchdown. Then and... they reviewed it, knee down at the one yard. Yep. So this then I looked at you and I said, wouldn't it be crazy if they somehow screwed this up? <laughs> You're at the one yard line. You essentially just thought you won. Everybody was on the field. Right. Like Eli Manning said during the broadcast, which we should talk about in a second, mm. was... Lamar Jackson was getting ready to take his jersey off and you know trade it right. to another player right. before we found out that they, they had to do another play. And, uh, of course, uh, false start at the one-yard line. Takes him back five yards. Okay, whatever. Just gives you a little more field to, to work with, right? Throws a pass. Derek Carr does. Hits a Ravens defender. Or I think it hits his own player in the helmet. Uh, no, it hits a defender. Okay, hit a defender in the helmet. Ball bounces up. Gets intercepted in the end zone. Ravens ball. Like, you got to be kidding. If you're a Raiders fan, your stomach just had to have dropped. And I figured all I got to do is go down and kick a field goal now. That's all it's going to take. And with with Lamar, Lamar was doing some good running. They had a couple of nice throws. uh, And they got down to about the 30, and then they fumbled it. Yeah. Then they just fumbled it. You know, uh, he got sacked or or he tried to run. I think a a running back, somebody got tackled, fumbled. Raiders get the ball back. Yep. So here you go, Raiders. You got a second opportunity. And. You're in a in a in a position where you could just kick a, a field goal, but you run a play, and then, you know, you get some. De- you know, I think they got it lined up just right. They had a nice field goal set up, and then they took a delay a game trying to get the kicker out onto the field. Mm. Like, didn't like even Peyton was saying like you yell kickoff or, or kick team, right. and where's your kicker? Your kicker wasn't out there. The kicker didn't know they were going to kick a field goal. Mm. He goes out there. Raiders take because they have no timeouts left. Take a delay of game. Mm. And then, uh, so instead, the offense has got to come back out onto the field. And then Derek Carr just throws up this weird, just chucking it at the sky. Right. Uh, big arching pass. Guy catches it. Touchdown. Raiders he was so win. wide open. <laughs> the defender missed his play or missed his Yeah, he was assignment. a couple steps behind the guy. Yeah. I mean, the, the Ra- they kept saying the Ravens were running that zero defense. You know, they didn't really have a lot of safeties in the back. They were, they were playing to essentially blitz Hmm. uh cover zero is what they said and bit them at bit them right there at the end but man what a thrilling game this ended up being i think everybody was just enamored with the craziness of events that you know hey raiders still won despite all uh uh penalties delay a game the interception and they still found a way to win it was wild yeah overturned call yeah and and when i was uh flipping through channels this is while you were still at work you know, I saw that uh, it was on uh, like two two ABC channels that we get. Uh, it was on uh, ESPN, ESPN, and, uh, and then I saw it was on ESPN two, and I thought, why is it why is it on ESPN two? And I flipped to that, and there's Peyton and Eli doing their alternate mega cast, which I totally forgot about. 
And so I watched that for a while. And at first, I did not like it. I mean, I love Peyton Manning. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like Eli Manning. The two of them together work well. But for some reason, I did not like this. They were talking about everything else but the game. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you had this the game over here on the main part of the screen. And then on the side, you had uh, Peyton and Eli. They were in separate locations. Uh, looked like they were in some kind of studios or whatever, not in their houses. But uh, it was it was just weird. And then they brought in Charles Barkley. Well, Charles Barkley on a Monday night broadcast. What's he doing there? And so there was just they were doing all this shtick and uh, just making all these jokes, and they had to get these stories in that they had you know pre-planned or whatever. And so I really, really didn't like it. And then late in the game, after you got home uh, in the fourth corner from work, uh, we went back to it. And by then it was just uh, the two of them. Well, then they brought in Russell Wilson uh, on a Zoom call. So the three yeah, by the time Russell came in, it was yeah. great. And Russell, they, Russell was a good addition. They too. were actually talking about the game. They were analyzing the previous play, and they were talking about what are they going to call next. That was what I expected from the whole thing. Not this early in the in the game shtick with you know Charles Barkley and just you know they're they're playing up to the cameras and everything. That I did not like at all. But by the end of the game, it it was really really good. Yeah. So you know I would I would watch it again. And and they're going to be there Monday night. So I don't know if we're going to watch their. I think we should at least a... record it, you know, <laughs> and see what they had to say during yeah. the Lions game. You yeah, might, you might you have go. to watch a, a Lions train wreck game twice. Yeah. So, yeah. all yeah. right, yeah. I, I, like I said, what I saw, I liked. Uh, there were some highlights of the earlier part of the broadcast that you were talking about, and I don't know. So we'll see. I think maybe they're just, you know, they just got to get their footing. It's the same. It's week right. one. They right. got to get their footing. Yep. So that's it yep. for the NFL this week. Um, oh yeah, NFC North. Uh, oh and four. All four <laughs> NFC North teams lost. Yep. Oh and one. And then. Uh, all the NFC West teams, 1-0. and So the Lions are still tied for first place. Technically, yeah. 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 And it, you can make an argument that they're in first place in the NFC North because they scored the most points. Right, but they also gave up more points than somebody else. So I, I saw two different rankings. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They Depending on second, how you sort second it. Second or third place. But yeah. So. In, our, in our minds, they're in first place right now. No. Um, <laughs> I think they had to go up. I will, we'll say they're tied for last place in the division. Oh. And they just got everywhere to go but up. Or everywhere. You know the saying. All right. Nowhere but up to go. All right, that's it for the NFL scoreboard for real this time.